we're going to spend doing. We're going to spend, uh, we'll still explain stuff along the way, of course, but let's try and at least get, I'm, I'm way behind on time. I probably talked entirely too much. Hopefully it was worthwhile, but let's actually try and get a workspace built and see how far we can get into this start the workshop section. So I'm going to do this in the Ohio region. Uh, you guys, if you're following along in your own account, Feel free to pick a region closer to you if you want, but pick one of these regions. These are the ones that we've tested. So uh, here we go with Cloud9 in Ohio. I'm gonna create an environment. What else can I do? What else do I need to do? Name it EKS Workshop, choose a T3 small. So EKS Workshop, then T3 small. By the way, if you are really wanting to save money, you can still pick T2 micro, but it won't work for the Kubeflow chapter. So uh, we, we bumped it up a little bit to T3 small to handle that chapter. We won't be doing that chapter this week. So if you, like I said, if you uh, really are, are watching out, then uh, you can do the micro instance. It's, it'll work just fine. So this will take a couple minutes to come up. This is provisioning an EC2 instance. If you aren't familiar with Cloud9, it's a cloud-based IDE that, that uh, AWS provides. And it brings up an EC2 instance that has uh, the capability of more or less going to sleep and waking back up as, we, as you need it. So the default setting is to go to sleep after it's been uh, inactive for 30 minutes. Uh, so if you close this tab 30 minutes later, your EC2 instance will be stopped, which means you'll stop paying for it. It's pretty cool. Then when you connect again, uh, it'll, it'll wake back up and pick right back up where you left off. So we have our Cloud9 instance. Uh, I like to sort of rearrange the screen a little bit, so you can do this too if you want to. I close the welcome. You know, I feel welcomed already. I close this little bottom bar just because I want to reopen a terminal up here. And that way I get, you know, a decent size terminal. Um, and now I'm ready to go. So next up, installing some Kubernetes tools. So the first one that we're going to install is Kube Control. And we actually vend uh, our own version of Kube Control, but you can use um, you know, the official version of Cube Control if you want to. The reason we started vending was to have IAM integration built into it. Uh, but since then, uh, we've actually you know, had that accepted upstream. So we're still in the habit of vending our own, but it's just for you know, convenience sake more than anything. So let's yum install some utilities that we might use later in the workshop. These are just basic shell utilities, JQ, get text, uh, more utils, et cetera. Nothing Kubernetes specific, uh, but pretty handy. Here's another one that isn't yum installable, uh, but it's also pretty cool because it's a Docker file or it's a Docker command. And uh, we're installing it, quote unquote, by just setting up uh, a shell alias, YQ, uh, is if you've heard of JQ, which we just installed for processing JSON, YQ is the equivalent for processing YAML. And there's a lot of YAML in Kubernetes. Get ready. If, you're, if you didn't know, there's a lot of YAML. Now you so, know. Having, yeah, so having the ability to process it uh, versus using sed and awk and things like that, definitely worthwhile. So we've, uh, we've set up our environment uh as far as installing commands and stuff goes next thing we're going to do is we're going to build an iam role for our workspace and to make it easy we have this deep link right here that that will take you uh to iam and get you started uh down the path of setting up this role so uh we pick it should be picked for you if you follow the deep link but just confirm the aws service is the trusted entity EC2 is the service. We, we go to next and permissions and the deep link should have already checked for you administrator access. 
So we go to next for tags and then next to review. And we give it a workshop and we give it a name, EKS workshop dash admin. You can see I've already done this, but at this point you can just hit create role. And what we're doing is we're building an instance role that we can then attach to this Cloud9 instance that'll give us administrative access uh, to be able to build EKS clusters. And that's, you know, what's really cool about that is I don't have to have my credentials locally on the, the workstation. I can just exactly. inherit the IAM role that's assigned to that instance. That's it, another cool thing about Cloud9. Exactly. And separately, a little bit of need to know about Cloud9 is Cloud9 uses short-term credentials. Short-term credentials are not compatible with EKS right now. So that IAM integration that we have uh, is great, uh, but it doesn't work with the short-term credentials that might change out from under you. What happens in the workshops case, what would happen if you didn't walk through this process and you just use the short-term credentials is you would hit, uh, you know, type the command to provision an EKS cluster. And it always provisions, uh, you know, with the account that provisioned it uh, is automatically the administrator of the cluster. But by the time it's done, your credentials have usually have rotated and now you don't have those credentials anymore. So you're not the administrator of that cluster that, that you just brought up. So to avoid that, we actually uh, walk through changing the IAM role. Um, so there's screenshots on the workshop of how to do this, but since making those screenshots, there's this cool little button right here. You can click this button. I think it's my first initial, so yours might be a different letter, but you can actually pick manage EC2 instance. Either way is fine. Um, follow the screenshots on the workshop or uh, do this. You'll end up in the same place. But here's my instance. And I'm going to go to Actions, Instant Settings, Replace IAM Role. And I'm just going to go find that role that I just created, EKS Workshop Admin. Make sure that that's in there and hit Apply. Close. And if I just want to verify down here, if I scroll down in the details, uh, somewhere in here, IAM Role, there it is. And you see listed EKS Workshop Admin. That's not the only verification you could or even should do. Uh, let's go back to the workshop real quick and we'll go on to the next steps where we, where we will uh, validate that this is done. And we are cutting it pretty close on time here, so. Ah. <laughs> All right, four minutes, four minutes. Let's do this really fast. So uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to turn off credential management. So uh, we'll click the little gear go to AWS and we'll turn off credentials. Again, screenshots in there. And uh, now let's delete if there were any credential files uh, dropped in place, delete those. We'll export some environment settings. And then we'll test. And we'll validate that we have the correct role. I am role valid. So I did it correctly. Yay. Uh, let's finish out this chapter. And let, we'll do that by cloning the repos. This is really simple. We're just cloning uh, some application repos that we'll use later. We'll create an SSH key that we might use to get into our workstation. I don't think we actually will anymore, but it doesn't hurt us to have the key. Oops. Cool. And then we're going to create a custom managed key. So I'll explain this tomorrow, but basically what we're doing is we're creating a key. And I, by the way, already have this done, so it's going to cause an error. Wait, did I miss configuring the region? 
I must have. Okay, now my default region is set. So anyway, the custom managed key is uh, a KMS key that we're going to use to encrypt all of our secrets for our cluster. And I've created the key already. Uh, so I'm just gonna reference it here uh, by discovering what the master ARN for that key is. And then uh, as we build the cluster tomorrow, uh, we'll we'll talk about how that works. So let's wrap up uh, by looking at what we did today. Today we had a lengthy uh, discussion about uh, what is Kubernetes, how it works, how it's constructed, and then what EKS is in the Kubernetes space and how that can help uh, you know make it easier for you to run Kubernetes at AWS. Then we built out uh, an environment that we can use uh, to launch a Kubernetes cluster or an EKS cluster. So we're gonna pick up tomorrow with uh, launching our cluster using EKS control, and it's gonna move faster than it did today. Today was pretty academic. Uh, tomorrow is gonna be a lot more uh, hands-on. So we'll pick up from there, same time, uh, same uh, Adam and Brent, and same workshop. See you tomorrow. See you, everybody. Thanks so much.